Good afternoon. My name is Jordan Badu, and I work with Professor Anthony Gerbic in the Department of Electrical Engineering and Computer Science at the University of Michigan. We're here today to tell you about our work in accelerated optimization of metasurfaces with the Woodbury matrix identity. Metasurfaces are subwavelength arrays of polarizable particles. Since the spacing is subwavelength, the excitation does not vary across the dimensions of an individual element. Furthermore, since the element dimensions are subwavelength, the particles operate in their quasi-static regime. These concepts allow the metasurface to be homogenizable, meaning the response of each particle can be averaged. The metasurface then can be described by a single tensor impedance relating the induced surface current to the total electric fields. The key, is, the key to the homogenization process is that both the metasurface and the homogenized model share the same scattering parameters. Thus, rather than working with the array of polarizable particles themselves, we can work with a simple sheet with a uniform tensor sheet impedance. This greatly simplifies the analytical or computational burden. The tensor sheet impedance connects the induced surface current densities to the tangential averaged fields. In a general bi-anisotropic metasurface, electric surface currents are excited by not only the tangential electric fields, but also magnetic fields. Similarly, magnetic surface currents are excited by both electric and magnetic fields. This leads to the matrix equation shown in the left half of the slide. This boundary condition is known as the Generalized Sheet Transition Condition, or GSTC. The figure on the right shows the GSTC separating two media. A medium 1, an electric field E1, and a magnetic field H1 exist. Similarly, in medium 2, an electric field E2 and a magnetic field H2 exist. At the interface between the two media, both electric and magnetic surface currents are supported. The tensors Y, chi, gamma, and z connect the fields to the currents according to the GSTC. The tensors are known as the electric admittance tensor y, the magnetoelectric coupling tensor chi, the electromagnetic coupling tensor gamma, and the magnetic impedance tensor z. Metasurfaces are designed using this boundary condition. In short, the surface tensors are synthesized to obtain the desired field transformations between the two media. The metasurface considered in this work supports only electric currents. Furthermore, these currents are excited by electric fields only. Thus, the GSTC collapses into the simplified form in the blue box. The electric tensor admittance is reduced to a scalar impedance as the boundary condition is written in inverse form relating the field to the product of current and impedance and since only the TE polarization is considered in this work. The problem is 2D, meaning the geometry is invariant in Z direction and hence the outer plane wave number KZ is equal to zero. The metasurface design example is a wide angle reflecting metasurface. A normally incident plane wave is reflected to an angle of 70 degrees. The metasurface is finite in width and in thickness. In this example, the metasurface is 8 lambda wide and lambda by 23.62 thick. The metasurface consists of three layers. The first layer, layer 1, is an impedance sheet which is described by the GSTC in reduced form. The second layer is a dielectric spacer and the third layer is a ground plane. The metasurface is discretized into 160 lambda by 20 elements. To design the metasurface, we will follow a three-phase design approach. In phase one, the metallic cladding is homogenized and an integral equation is formulated using the GSTC boundary condition. The integral equation can be solved directly after stipulating the desired total field, the normally incident plane wave plus the 70 degree reflected plane wave. The direct solution of the integral equation results in the necessary electric impedance that results in the desired field transformation. However, the impedance is generally complex since the local power density isn't zero at all points on the metasurface. Note, even in the event that all of the power incident is sent into the desired direction upon reflection, and hence power in is equal to power out, the incident and reflected plane waves interfere in the aperture causing the local power density associated with the interference pattern to be non-zero locally, but when integrated globally gives a zero result. Nonetheless, the complex impedance is undesired as implementing active and lossy surface elements is costly and difficult to realize. This is the reason for the optimization done in phase two. In phase two, gradient descent optimization is used to convert the complex sheet into a purely reactive passive and lossy sheet by way of introducing surface waves, which when added to the interference pattern of the incident reflected waves in the aperture, give a zero local power density. These surface waves being evanescent do not contribute to the reflected radiative near or far fields hence their utility in aiding and satisfaction of a reactive GSTC. The gradient descent optimization works on the kept reactances of the complex sheet from phase one. Thus, the resistances are discarded and the remaining reactances are optimized until the reflected far fields agree with those of the complex sheet. 
Since a metasurface is constructed from sub-wavelength elements, there are generally hundreds or thousands of reactants to optimize. Using gradient descent requires the forward problem to be solved n plus 1 times, where n is the number of reactive elements. Thus, an acceleration method is needed. Here we will use the Woodbury matrix identity to accelerate the gradient calculation. After the optimization converges, the homogenized reactive sheet is converted back to an equivalent pattern metallic cladding to finish the design cycle. Here we detail phase one. The pattern metallic cladding is homogenized and hence the pattern cladding is represented as an array of homogenized sheet elements. An integral equation is formulated using the, G, using the reduced GSTC. The integral equation couples the surface currents established on each of the homogenized sheet elements to the polarization currents in the dielectric spacer and the surface currents on the ground plane. Thus, the EFIE is a system of three coupled integral equations, one for each layer. On each of the n homogenized elements, k pulse basis functions are placed. The integral equation is converted into a matrix equation by the method of moments with Galerkin testing. Expressed in block matrix form, the matrix equation is shown in the lower right. Normally, the sheet impedances on the metasurface layer are unknown. However, they can be related to the desired total aperture fields using the GSTC. The matrix W1 is constructed by testing the desired total electric field in the aperture. Note the impedance of the dielectric is obtained following from the volume equivalence principle. The matrix equation can then be solved directly to obtain the induced surface and polarization currents. The GSTC can then be used again to obtain the specification of the impedances as W1 divided by I1. The result is, as discussed before, a complex valued impedance sheet. The complex sheet is shown on this slide. The scattered near and far fields are shown on the right. The reflected field is directed to the desired far field angle and the near field shows the reflected wavefronts are being directed to the specified wide angle of 70 degrees. The complex valued sheet must be converted into a purely reactive sheet by way of optimization. The gradient descent optimizer is seeded with the reactances of the complex sheet. Note, the direct solution of step one is necessary to obtain a good initial point as convergence of gradient descent optimizers strongly depends on obtaining a good initial solution. The cost function will be formulated around the far field amplitude to avoid sampling the evanescent fields in the aperture. Thus, the cost function will be the RMS difference between the far field amplitude pattern of the complex sheet and that of the optimized reactive sheet. The gradient descent optimization strategy is actually a second order approach and hence is really known as a quasi-Newton method. In the quasi-Newton method, the cost function is first evaluated at the initial seed point as shown in the red step one and two. Then a multivariate Taylor series expansion is formed around, that, around the evaluated point. Only up to the second order terms are kept. The expansion is shown in the red step three. Since the expansion is quadratic, it has a well-defined minimum found by setting the gradient of the expansion equal to zero. This results in the update equation shown in the red step four. Thus, the next point in the optimization is found by solving the update equation and the process repeated until the minimum of F is reached. The update equation requires both the Hessian and the gradient of F. Thus, we calculate those next. The Hessian is approximated using the BFGS formulation. In this formulation, the Hessian is approximated using the secant method from differences in the gradient of F. The BFGS approach also gives expressions for the inverse of the Hessian in terms of the difference of the gradients at two successive points and in terms of the difference of those two points themselves. The formulas are shown on this slide. Thus, the Hessian can be found from the calculations of the gradient and therefore only the gradient needs to be calculated. The gradient is calculated using finite forward differences. Thus, n plus 1 evaluations of the cost function are needed. The cost function is evaluated by calculating the far field amplitude pattern for a given set of reactances. The far field pattern is calculated by integrating the currents obtained from solving the matrix equation. Thus, n plus 1 solves of the linear system are required to obtain the full gradient. Note, however, that each component of the gradient only perturbs the reactances along one dimension and by a small amount. Thus, the impedance matrix, which is inverted to solve, the linear system only changes by a few of its diagonal elements for each component calculation of the gradient. Since the update to the impedance matrix, which is inverted, is low rank, the Woodbury matrix identity can be used to accelerate the gradient calculation by accelerating the calculation of the inverse of the perturbed impedance matrix. The Woodbury matrix identity, also known as the sherman morrison woodbury formula or the matrix inversion lemma, says that the inverse of a rank R correction of some matrix can be computed by doing a rank R correction to the inverse of the original matrix. 
The formula is shown here. The impedance matrix is updated along R of its diagonal elements by some small perturbation. Thus, the matrix ACB forms the low rank update to the impedance matrix. The inverse of the Z plus ACB matrix can be found by formulating the expressions on the right hand side. The inverse of the original unperturbed impedance matrix is computed only once per full gradient computation. The matrix C containing the perturbations is diagonal and can be inverted analytically. The remaining matrices are sparse and thus sparse matrix routines where the matrix products accelerate the computations even further. For more information on the use of the identity for metasurface design, see our cited paper at the bottom of the slide. On this slide, some numerical results are shown comparing the time to calculate the full gradient with and without the Woodbury matrix identity. The times were obtained by inverting a randomly generated impedance matrix of the indicated size in the table. The diagrams show up to 26.5 times improvement using the identity versus not using it. This speedup permits the practical optimization of large metasurfaces containing many elements. The results of phase two are shown here. The optimization converged in 400 iterations after approximately six and a half hours. The resultant purely reactive sheet impedances are shown in the lower left. Note how the scattered near and far fields are the same as that of the complex valued impedance sheet from phase one, one's direct solution. The purely reactive sheet was then imported into Comsol Multiphysics and simulated. The result in far field pattern is shown in the figure as the black curve. The agreement validates the optimization approach. The surface waves introduced are visualized here. The total field amplitude spectrum in the aperture is plotted in the figure. The lower figure shows the spectrum zoomed into the visible region only. The complex sheet shown in the blue curve shows little, little evanescent spectrum, whereas the optimized reactive sheet shown in the red curve shows evanescent content. Both sheets, however, show the same visible spectrum. These surface waves allow the total field to satisfy a reactive GSTC by adding to the interference pattern in the aperture in just a way to give zero local power density at each point along the metasurface. In phase three, the optimized purely reactive metasurface is realized through patterning of the metallic cladding. The sheet impedance associated with pattern parts is obtained from waveguide simulations. The result is shown in the upper figure. These parts are used to obtain the initial metallic cladding. Comsol Multiphysics is then used to find the scattered far field through, wave, through full wave simulation of the pattern metallic cladding over the grounded dielectric. The result is shown in the uppermost figure on the right hand side. The result shows some disagreement since the correlation between the pattern parts and their extracted sheet impedance were obtained assuming locally periodic environments. However, the optimized impedances do not vary adiabatically and thus the environment is not locally periodic. This leads to a small error in the extracted impedances. The full pattern metallic cladding was then finely tuned through optimization to obtain better results. The result is shown in the blue curve. The agreement is much better. In conclusion, the Woodbury matrix identity was used to accelerate the calculation of the gradient and gradient descent optimization of metasurface reactances. The metasurface reactances were optimized to introduce the necessary surface waves to satisfy a reactive GSTC. Without the Woodbury matrix identity, the optimization would have taken approximately 30 times longer, resulting in impractical design times. We thank you for your attention.